Good morning. Today we are reading from Titus chapter 2 as we are wrapping up on what the grace of God is this week in our devotionals. It's beautiful to know that the grace of God is the power of God whereby he keeps his promise. The whole system wherein he says, I offer you my ability. I promise you by my doing, by my power that you will share in my quality of life and so you'll be set free from the lusts and the passions and the destruction that is in this world and you will be able to live a good life in this world a holy life wherein God makes you his habitation where God lives in you bringing forth who he is inside you now we're going to look at this in a very practical way in Titus chapter 2 verse 9 listen to what he teaches Titus here this is what Paul commands Titus to teach he says teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything to try to please them not to talk back to them, and not to steal from them. Afrikaans ons sê, hoop steal. Not to steal from them, but to show that they can be fully trusted, so that in every way they make the teaching of our God and our Savior attractive. Now, uh, other translations say that they might adorn the doctrine of God that they might adorn the doctrine of God and of our Savior in all things. So we find here that he's saying, listen, I want you to tell the slaves not to steal from their masters and to treat their masters well. In other words, to be submissive to their masters and so forth, not to steal from them so that the masters might adorn the doctrine of God and our Savior. Isn't that beautiful? So then he says the next verse, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all people. So he's saying that this grace has now appeared to the slave master as well, as what has appeared to this Christian slave, where the Christian slave by grace is now being taught not to steal. Now that teaching on not to steal is not as what the law says you shall not steal. It is a deliverance from the power where you don't want to steal, but you steal. Where you actually find that I'm not under that rulership. I'm not under that dictatorship anymore where the good that I want to do, I cannot do it, but where the life of God started manifesting me. And he says here that the grace of God has appeared unto all men. So I want you to the slaves to know that, yes, the slave masters might be wrong in how they treat you and all of that, but the grace of God has also appeared to set them free from the wickedness that is inside them. And as you believe upon the grace of God, and the grace of God brings forth a brand new life in you, it will make the life that you live and the doctrine that you believe in, which is a doctrine that says grace appeared to bring forth in me freedom from stealing, for instance, where I can be a good worker. That will be attractive to him, and he will adorn the gospel, wherein and what it basically means is that he will also believe the gospel. This grace then teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust and that we should live sober and righteously and godly in this world. I want to read it from the NIV. The NIV says it very powerfully. It says, Teach slaves to be subject to their masters in everything, to try and please them, not to talk back to them, and to do not steal from them, but show that they can be fully that the slaves can be fully trusted so that in every way they will make the teaching of god attractive for the grace of god has appeared that offers salvation to all people that is now to the slaves as well as to the slave master so what he's saying is this grace can also set the slave master free it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled and upright and godly lives in this present age. Look at Paul's argument here to Titus. He's saying, listen, teach the Christian slaves that are in your church that this grace that sets them free not to steal is as you live in that grace, it would be a habitation of God wherein God would now inhabit the workplace and then it would become attractive 
to the slave owner and the very grace that sets you free and teaches you to live a holy life will also live in him, teaching him to live a holy life where you as the slave, as well as the slave owner, will now have a life ordered by the grace of God where you are self-controlled, upright and godly in this present age. So when he talks about salvation here, he's simply talking about being saved from ungodliness, saved from worldly passions. How? By the grace of God. The grace of God appeared that offers salvation to people. And what does grace do? It teaches you to say no to ungodliness. I don't know how to say no. And somebody, uh, when I get tempted with something, I don't know how to say no. I'm just that kind of a person. No, grace, the promise of God, whereby the Spirit of God puts you at a place where you are not under the rulership of worldly passions, has appeared. That is what grace is. It teaches us. In other words, another way of teaching would be to say it gives us the ability to say no to ungodly and worldly passions and to live lives that are self-controlled and upright and godly. Where? In this present age. While we wait, verse 13 says, for the blessed hope the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins. You remember what we said in the beginning of the week on Monday, to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. So what is this purification? This purification that he's talking about here is not a purification where God just says, I only see you as pure. It is a purification where God comes by the power of grace through the doing of Jesus, where he promises people that are bound to sin and death and destruction, the life of heaven, those who believe receive the resurrection power of Jesus, and they are then purified from the wickedness that is inside this world. They are purified from a life where they are uh, where they are not or they are given a life where they are self-controlled and upright and godly where in this present age being saved from the death destruction sin and chaos that is in this world living a holy life and that's how he purifies us he doesn't purify us uh, in a mystic way it's a purification that takes place through the power of God entering into your life. And he's purified us to be his own people in this present world, living the life of God by God, living in you by God, making you the, his habitation. And then as we live this holy life, in living this holy life, we are awaiting the blessed appearance of Jesus Christ, the manifestation of the immortal man Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from this wicked world wherein we are then awaiting this immortality, wherein he will manifest it in us. So what does grace do? Grace teaches us. Grace actually manifests in us the brand new life of God. And that is true for whatever sin you find yourself in. Or let me not use the word sin, fruit of the flesh that you would find yourself in. You can say, I'm just an anxious person. No. You know, I'm just a person that worries. I feel I've been called to worry. No, you are not. You are have been called by God and he promises you a life that's free from the destruction that's in this world. Now, as God came to, come to, came to Abraham, he was coming to a person that was wanting children. And now, as you are a person, what makes you a very good candidate for the gospel of grace is if you are a person say, I want to be free from these things. I want to have a free, good life. You'll hear the voice of God and you will hear. He says, I promise you what you want. God, I've tried so many times. I cannot do it. Well, that is what Abraham said. And God came and promised him in the midst of his sin. So your sin does not bring distance between you and God. God comes to you 
and he sees the death in you and he promises you as you believe upon him the power of the resurrection will raise you up to be seated in heavenly places simply meaning to be at a place where you are not under the rulership of the things of this world by God bringing forth a brand new life in you and so you're a habitation for God and now salvation has appeared unto all people. That doesn't mean all people are saved. Simply means that God says that he, the, the, the boss can also be saved and the worker can be saved. And the way that happens is by seeing the manifestation of God's life in the lives of people, which will then draw them to say, what is this? And then grace can be preached unto him. The gospel where people can be truly set free. Thank you so much. I trust that you've enjoyed these daily devotionals. If you have, send it to a friend or two. If you like this on on uh, YouTube, um, just put a like there if you truly like it. It'll be good for us. Thank you for that, and we will talk again then next Monday. God bless.